Hi, Wayne here from Talkcast. We've got some essential tips for everyone with the DPF filter. We're going to look at what the problems are with DPF filters, why they get blocked up, what you can do to prevent that problem from happening in the first place, and what course of action you should take if you get a DPF warning light. Please watch to the end, there's some important information regarding additives. If we choose the wrong type of DPF cleaning additive, we can actually damage the DPF filter or cause more problems for ourselves. In this video, we're going to take a look at the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. For many drivers, it's a bit of a pain. They're a necessity because the emissions are really becoming a problem with cars, particularly diesels and the way they work. So the particulate filter is designed to catch those particles of soot before they get out into the environment and do lots of damage. Now the particulate filter is not just designed to catch those particles, it's designed to burn them off as well. The common issues we see with DPFs becoming clogged are things that most drivers could actually avoid if they just took a moment to think about how they work and what they need to do. Now we found out quite recently, which was interesting, on some cars they will not enter the DPF regeneration cycle if there's a low amount of fuel in the tank. So for some you need about a third of a tank of fuel before the diesel regeneration will actually kick in. If you're in the habit of running round with your fuel gauge at low, you're basically stopping the car from ever entering its DPF cleaning site. So the DPF filter requires heat in order to work effectively and burn off that soot that is built up. So if you do lots of short journeys, you're just not getting the heat into it and you're definitely going to have a problem. The other issue with short journeys is that engines tend to burn less efficiently. So you get a lot more soot on those short runs. So not only are you clogging the filter up more, you're actually never reaching the temperature where it will clean itself. So that's a twofold thing to bear in mind. Always run the car for a, a distance, go for a, a serious run, and don't be afraid of exploring the upper two thirds of the RPM range once the engine has warmed up properly, because it's at those points where the soot particles in your DPF will start to burn off. Now, if your DPF has actually become blocked, it's probably too late to do anything different in your driving style. You, your car just won't work now. You need to get that DPF removed and physically cleaned or replaced, which is quite costly. So we want to try and catch people before they get to that point of all that expense and all that hassle. So just driving the car fairly hard once it's warmed up regularly, once or twice a week, will give the engine a chance to get rid of all the soot that it's collected in the DPF filter. Think too about the quality of the fuel that you're using. If you're using a good quality of fuel with all the proper detergents and things it needs, it's keeping the injectors in good order. You're getting a good atomization of the fuel as it goes into the engine and you'll get a much cleaner burn, which really does help reduce the soot build up in the first place, it'll help you to get more of a cleaning effect when you do reach those upper RPM ranges. So why not just take off the DPF and be done with it? Well, it's not legal in pretty much every country and state. You do need to check where you are in the world. We can't cover every country and every state, but for the most part, it would be illegal to remove any type of pollution control you have on your car. There are faster flowing alternatives available and I would criticise some of the designs from the manufacturers as to where they've placed the diesel particulate filters. They really need to be quite close to the exhaust manifold where most of the heat is. So if they have put it a little further away from the manifold, straight away you're losing a lot of the heat through the exhaust system before it actually gets to the DPF. So let's assume you've been reasonably good, but your filter is starting to get clogged up. You're starting to get the hesitancy. Maybe the DPF warning light has flashed up a couple of times. That's your time to start thinking about getting this sorted and fixed. So what can you do? We'll run good quality fuel, Make sure the car has a decent run when you take it out. If you have to do a short distance drive, extend it. Go the long way around. Enjoy a return trip home through the country route. Whatever it takes to make sure your engine is up to operating temperature. So that will definitely help. To actually get it cleaned, you might need to add some additives to the fuel tank to aid with the burning. A lot of these additives work 
by getting into the carbon that's built up, softening it up and just making it burn off more quickly and more easily. So when your car enters its DPF cleaning schedule, it's automatically raising the engine temperatures to encourage the burning off of that carbon. Now it's critical that you choose an additive in this case that doesn't raise the temperature any further because that could actually damage your DPF. So be very careful when selecting your DPF cleaner. Look at the tin, read the instructions. There are cleaners and blockage removers that don't raise the temperature. They're ideal for partially blocked DPF or for that occasion when your DPF warning light is on and you're just not quite getting it clean with the conventional cycle. The other option is to buy the regenerators and maintenance DPF additives. These need to be added to a tank every few thousand miles and they actually keep the DPF clean. They're ideal for people that only do short journeys. They raise the temperature of the engine and just stop that carbon from building up in the first place. So that is very much a preventative measure rather than a cleaning measure. So it's absolutely vital that you look at the instructions carefully before choosing an additive because you could be doing more damage. Always do your research carefully. Don't just buy something off the shelf because it says on the box what it's going to do. In the main, those claims are exaggerated. Um, in the real world, you're probably wasting your money. They use the term snake oil, don't they, for a lot of the products that are sold that don't actually do what they're claimed to do. We hope to help people avoid those problems and issues. If you can use those cleaners spaced out through the year, maybe every six months or every three months, depending on your driving style, whether you're doing lots of short journeys, whether you use the car, that much it will greatly help keep that DPF filter clear and flowing freely so you won't experience that loss of power please check out the articles on our site we go into DPF cleaning methods a lot more thoroughly the articles on our site are regularly updated as well we can't update videos once they're published that's it unfortunately so come to the site check out some of the articles there's some links below that you'll be able to click on um, and they'll bring you through to relevant pages on our site so you can actually find out more about this.